The growing use of high-powered weapons by active shooters is a game-changer for law enforcement officers. The shootings in Dallas and Baton Rouge are forcing first responders in North Texas to modify their plan of action. Fox News' Alex Boyer in downtown Dallas. Alex. Yeah, Clarice, assault rifles have become a major cause for concern. A police trainer tells me officers are now engaged at a much greater distance than they used to be. The bullets can travel farther and faster and even penetrate bulletproof vests. So today, some first responders took part in a training exercise in order to address some of those concerns. This is only a drill, but for Louisville police officers and firefighters, it can be a lifesaver. What we do is we try to imagine an actual active shooter coming into a school and then the response that would be necessary to stop him. Officer Rob Feagans is a certified instructor teaching his fellow officers how to navigate this new normal in police work. The police are basically taught to flood the school. We want to get as many uniformed officers in as possible and we want to stop the killing. In this drill, there were two active shooters using high-powered weapons, the same type of assault-style rifles used by the shooters in Dallas and Baton Rouge. They're high power. They'll, they'll penetrate bulletproof vest. Also, they tend to be a higher magazine capacity. All of those factors have forced police officers to tweak their training. In both ambush attacks, the gunmen were military trained. The shoot and move scenario, this seems like something newer and uh, that we're encountering. Is it something we need to be able to train our officers to be able to respond to? Well, absolutely, because we, it, it, it's a lot more dynamic. If, if the shooter cannot, he can be at any distance to begin with, and then he's, he's continuing to move. Firefighters and paramedics are also fine tuning their response plan, knowing they too can be targets. So we've tried to train our model to adjust to what's going on in the world. Division Chief Mark Richard says communication can be challenging. Today, they learned being inside of a building with cement walls and a metal roof hindered their radio frequency. So there's a lot of challenges and threats in the area that you have to maintain situational awareness. And for police, like we saw during the police ambush in downtown Dallas, part of the problem is figuring out where the bullets are coming from. The biggest thing, like I keep telling my guys, be prepared for every situation, stay aware of your, of your environment, and be ready for anything. Officer Feagan says a big problem with those shoot and move scenarios, as they call it, like the one we saw right here in downtown Dallas, is that officers can't tell where the bullets are coming from, making it sound like there is oftentimes more than one shooter, even though there is not. Officer Feagan says those real life scenarios are now going to be incorporated into future trainings. Clarice. Alex, thank you.